Thank you. Um, so I've been covering Google and search engines for a very long time, and they asked me to talk about some things that have been happened recently where people are wondering if Google in particular and search engines in general are not so friendly. Perhaps maybe they're vampires. And in fact, um, that's what the publisher of the Wall Street Journal called them back in June. Uh, if you missed it, in 2009 was a remarkable year. It seemed like all the newspapers were very angry, in particular at Google. Uh, they gave out all their free content, and Google just sank its fangs into them, sucks them dry, and caused all the problems. Rupert Murdoch doesn't have a lot of uh, fine words for Google either. And, and the question of all this is, you know, is all this stuff true? Now, some of these slides, there's a small URL, and you can download them later, or maybe I'll put them up on SlideShare. I should do that um, if you want to read more about some of the issues. But um, I do have some proof. It is true. They are vampires. This is Larry and Sergey. Um, this is either from Twilight or New Moon. I'm not certain. My 18-year-old my niece would tell me. If I, and I think they're vampires. They look scary enough. Anyway. Um, but how about some stats? Well, one stat that came out last year was that only 44% of people, 44% uh, of people just scan headlines at Google News, just read all the stuff that Google's stealing from, from these poor newspapers, and they don't even click to go to the stories. They don't click at all. By the way, 44% of people also walk by newsstands and read headlines, but nobody complains about that. Um, and the, the, the remaining people, the majority, but you know, forget it, the remaining that apparently do click through, they're pretty much worthless, according to the Wall Street Journal. Um, they can't make any money off of them. They just read an article and they go away. So, you know, you might as well just keep them. We don't need you. The, the problem with that stat is that from that survey, it was a terrible question. Uh, it, it was one choice. You know, did you scan headlines or did you go to the site? Well, sometimes you scan headlines, sometimes you go to the site. You should let people ask for both of them. But you could only choose one, and so you probably overinflated the number of people who say they only scan and that they don't actually go there. And there were a number of other issues with it. And, and in terms of the people who come from Google or search engines as being worthless, I find it remarkable that I, as a, a, a person who takes the print Wall Street Journal, can see an ad like this for six ninety five I can get a brand new website that 's awesome um, in the print newspaper, and they can make money off of that, and they can convince advertisers that I actually care about that ad and that they should spend hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars to do that, but somehow they can 't make money off of their own website they can 't equal that you know there needs to be some catching up going with it, but I hardly think that the visitors that they get are use are, are worthless still you do kind of feel for some of the news publishers when Google won't pay for news articles, but they will pay you know, millions of dollars to Twitter so that they can get Justin or whatever his name, Lieber, I don't, I'm not up on it, but he's the guy who sings on YouTube, I guess, right? They'll pay for that. They're actually paying Twitter for the ability to get that content, but news content, no, we're not going to pay for that. Okay. So uh, verdict on that front to me, I think it's still fair use for you to be able to link to people, to, to list their headlines, to summarize stories in a short uh, segment. Uh, Google does send huge amounts of traffic to the newspapers, and it would be a much, much different world if back when Google started, they had followed suit with some of the other search engines doing paid inclusion, where they would have said, you know, if you want to be listed with us, yeah, we'll pick up some of your pages, but you've got to pay for a whole bunch more of them. And publishers would actually be paying millions of dollars to be getting the traffic that they're actually just getting for free and then have the gall to sometimes complain about. And if you really, really don't like it, there's an easy way to stake that vampire. It's the robot's text file. It's two lines. And I think, you know, even Rupert Murdoch could probably figure out how to do that. So, you know, that, those two lines, Google leaves you alone. It's, it's garlic. They're gone. Ah, but what about another issue in the idea that Google is more and more trying to favor itself? It's like you do a search and you can't get out of Google at all. In this case, here I've done a search, uh, how to tie a tie, which was not necessary for today, but I did it anyway. And um, when I click on the video, I go over to YouTube, a Google-owned property. It's like a, a, a perfect loop, an endless circle, just keeping going over and over again. But then again, if I clicked on the other link just above the little video snippets, I actually go to Google Video, where they list video from all over the web. A lot of it's from YouTube, because YouTube has a lot of video. But a lot of it is from sources that Google doesn't own or control or possess or depossess. Well, how about shopping? Here you do a search, and Google 
trying to send you back into its own shopping search engine. It's terrible because you might be trying to shop and, and want to get results from merchants all across the web in one place so that in turn you could leave Google and go to those merchants who, by the way, are listed for free. So they're not even paying Google money, unlike some shopping search engines. And you've got one shopping search engine out of the UK that's very, very upset um, and saying that Google's not been neutral to them, that Google's been trying to hold them down. Because you know what Google wants to do when, they, when they're trying to really get in trouble is that they want to pick on a tiny shopping search engine nobody's ever heard of out of the United Kingdom rather than, you know, take down eBay. That's what you do. But anyway, that's, that's what they do. But the logic doesn't make a lot of sense. They are a search engine. So if I go do a search, and it's a shopping-oriented search, and they have a shopping search engine, it makes sense to show you shopping results. It would be like saying, I don't understand when I go to Google, why don't they don't list links that just take me to Yahoo and Bing and Ask? Because those are search engines, so if they just keep showing me results, they're favoring themselves. Their job is to show search results. But then it get more complicated and, and especially disturbing when you start talking about local. In this case, I've done a search for uh, an apartment complex. Uh, or I, I was looking for, I can't actually see the screen because I forgot my glasses. But I think I did a search for apartments in Huntington Beach. And I get a list of apartments in this area. Uh, when I click on it, it takes me into Google Maps. So I still haven't gone into any of these particular sites. I could do that if I clicked the right way, but the biggest link takes me into Google Maps. And I see an apartment complex I'm interested in, so I click on the biggest link, and rather than it taking me to the complex itself, it makes a little thing pop up on Google Maps. That's what you see in the uh, lower mm, right-hand corner. I think it's the right-hand corner, yeah. And then when I click over there, the most prominent links take me to a page about the apartment complex that Google, out of the goodness of its heart, has created for the apartment complex without asking the apartment complex, without getting in contact with the owners, without doing anything about saying, do you want us to do this? They just went out and did it. And if I notice the little green link, I can actually go to the apartment complex, which is, if you're the apartment complex owner, probably what you think Google ought to be doing. Similarly, if I do a search for, say, a hotel, in this case, I would think it was the Grand Hyatt uh, here in San Francisco, the biggest link will take me to the Hyatt website, but there's also this more info link that takes me to, yet again, a page that Google, out of the kindness of its heart, has created for Hyatt on its behalf. And those pages are really awesome because on the pages, the uh, people that they're about, the companies that they're about, will find that their competitors are buying ads. Or, if the competitors aren't buying ads, that's all right, because down at the bottom of the page, Google will list their competitors for them. So that was handy. If you're the Hyatt, what you really want on the bottom of your page is the list of all the other places people might want to stay. You might be a little annoyed at that point. But no, we can get even more annoyed, because now if you just do a regular web search, part of something that Google's recently done in the past week, and by the way, they've also just completely redesigned their pages, which is a big story out on Search Engine Land today, but that just happened before I did my slides, so that's why they're not as colorful as what you're about to see. But in this other change, you do a search here, and at the very bottom they list pages related to what you searched for, which in a lot of cases ought to just be called, here are people who compete with the company you just searched for. Go over there and have a good time buying from them. If you're the brand holder for that, at least that's how you might feel. But it gets even better because on those places pages, Google will also list all the reviews about your company, the good ones and the bad ones. And if you're bad, you look really, really bad. And you don't you can't control them, you can't get rid of the reviews, you didn't ask for the page, and now all the people who hate you are there, and so Google's making you look bad. Actually, you, you probably made yourself look bad. You know, Google's just indexing what people are saying about you, so, so clean up your act. Google, by the way, isn't the only one with this kind of problem. Any kind of review site, which is a search engine may have it, Yelp has come under a lot of fire for this sort of thing. But then again, in some of these pages, the owners have actually come in. That apartment complex page, the owner actually claimed that page, and the owner's actually doing things on that page and building up that page, and actually maybe finding that it is useful in a lot of ways as well. The pages definitely can be a good search product. There's a lot of reasons why, for a searcher, you want to point them over to this information that you've compiled across the web about a particular location, about a particular company, and so on. Uh, but it, it feels a bit difficult when you're building content around someone's, uh, someone else's brand, and in particular when you're putting ads on that content 
about that brand. And so maybe you need to be doing more with the brand owners so that they don't fear you or don't think you're a vampire, don't think you're so evil. Uh, perhaps you give them the ability to opt out of showing the reviews. They don't want to have the reviews, and you say, this owner has decided not to show the reviews. So the owner gets a little bit of a ding because why don't you want to show them? Are you afraid of something? But at least the owner doesn't feel like they suddenly have a reputation management problem that they've got to deal with that they didn't want in the first place. Um, you might have some sensitivity. Maybe you're not showing the related competitors on some of these brand pages. Maybe they aren't so necessary. Uh, maybe that's the trade-off you're doing when you're using other people's brands. And if you're going to run ads on pages about someone else's brand, maybe you share the ad revenue with them. That might be nice. Another thing that's been happening has been expanded content use. So for example, Bing and Google as well, they're quoting more information from your pages in some cases. In this example here, if you hovered over to the right of a listing, you get a longer description. Sometimes they can be significantly long. Um, similar thing happens at Google. Uh, you know, they, is that still fair use? If people got all the answer they needed just from the long description, do they not click through, which has tended to be the exchange that we've had? Similarly, we have uh, a number of services that are trying to extract facts from pages. So uh, here are Canadian actors through a program that Google calls Google Squared. And it has gone out and it has found all these pictures and it's found these images and it found all these facts about these actors from pages and extracted it. And if you want to know where the information came from, you'll discover that when you hover over the information itself. But you might not hover, you might not actually go to the source page because why bother? You've got all the facts right there. You don't need to go to the site. And suddenly, the sites that provided some of these facts are out of luck. Wolf from Alpha is another example. Here is a page that they did on AIDS in Africa, which is a lot of statistics, a lot of information. And you can scroll, 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 scroll. And when you get down to the very bottom, there's a little thing that says sources, a little tiny link. And if you click on that tiny link, then you get a list of sources of where all that information came from. So there, it's all good. If you compare that to the sort of pure search results that we had 10 years ago, the, the source link was the biggest thing there. It was a big, huge source link with a little snippet of information, and most people would click through and go over to the source itself. Here, you're lucky if you can even find the source that provided the information for someone else's business. So these are more issues that you kind of weigh up about whether or not the search engines are our friends or not. Uh, one thing is that opt-outs are very much a must. If you're going to be doing this and taking information, um, you need to allow people to say, no, I don't want you to take my information. But of course, when there's so many other people providing it, maybe it doesn't even carry the weight that it used to. You know, they're getting along without you. Uh, they're finding the other information in other places. So you don't really kind of have that as a threat, perhaps, with some of the services. Um, certainly, there ought to be more prominent and fair disclosure. You know, don't hide the sources. Don't bury them down there. If you're taking content, you're getting a significant amount of your information from another place, you ought to be calling it out. Uh, overall, I'd stress, in particular for, for Google, that their business strategy is to do what they think is in the user's interest. So they're really not, in, in my view, in watching them sitting around in, in the Googleplex and, and when they're not coming out of their coffins or whatever, thinking, now, how do we screw businesses today? You know, what do we do to get them? They're, they're thinking, well, how do we do products that, that, that people want? And they're not necessarily targeting any particular company when they do that. They always, I think, in their minds, think they're doing good and they're doing right. Um, and an article I wrote about the Google Hive mind gets into this more. But the things that they do have big, huge impacts. And they may not realize that they're doing it, but they do it anyway. And they probably need to do more to work with some of these stakeholders, especially the ones that are very fearful that they've come into their area and they're going to kill them. They might kill them anyway. Some of that's inevitable. Newspapers may very well have died even without Google. But there may be things that they can do to ease the transition or be friendlier with them. And they actually do a lot of this stuff, and they've gotten much better at that over time. And I think in general that all the search engines should honor, if you will, a content compact, that they should give back to the people that they get information from as much or more than they actually take. And in Google's case, I think that's still where they're giving far more than they're taking back, at least in terms of traffic, that people you know, universally report they get huge amounts of traffic for Google for free that would cost them tons and tons of money. The difficulty for a lot of people is they still don't quite know how to monetize that traffic. 
Anyway, that's it. If you want to keep up on search, there's some links you can follow up later on. Search Angel Land is my website. Uh, we have daily newsletter that keeps you going called SearchCap, fills you in on stuff, social news, and we do our own conferences. Thank you very much.